Now, what seems to develop is this. Most people think that I is a center of sensitivity somewhere inside their skin. And the majority of people feel that it's in their heads. That civilizations in different periods of history have differed about this. Some people feel that they exist in the solar plexus. Other people feel that they exist about here. But in American culture today, or in the Western culture in general, most people feel that they exist in here. And there is, as it were, a little man sitting inside the center of the skull. And he has a television screen in front of him, which gives him all messages from the eyeballs. He has earphones on, and that gives him all messages from the ears. And he has in front of him a control panel with various dials and buttons and things, which enable him to influence the arms and legs and to get all sorts of information from the nerve ends. And that's you. So we say in popular speech, I have a body. Not I am a body, but I have one because I am the owner of the body in the same way as I own an automobile. Uh, and I can take the automobile to the mechanic and occasionally in the same way I have to take my body to the mechanic, the surgeon, the dentist, the doctor and have it repaired. But it belongs to me. It goes along with me. I'm in it. A child, for example, can ask mother, Mom, uh, who would I have been if my father had been someone else? That seems a perfectly simple and logical question for a child to ask. Because of the presumption that your parents gave you your body and you were popped into it, maybe at the moment of conception or maybe at the moment of birth, from a repository of souls in heaven and your parents simply provided the physical vehicle. So that age-long idea that is indigenous especially to the Western world, is that I am something inside a body and uh, I am not quite sure whether I am or am not my body. Some doubt about it. I say, I think, I walk, I talk, but I don't say I beat my heart. I don't say I shape my bones. I don't say I grow my hair. I feel that my heart beating, my hair growing, my bone shaping is something that happens to me. And I don't know how it's done. But other things I do. And next, I feel quite surely that everything outside my body is quite definitely not me. There are two kinds of things outside my body. Number one is other people. And they are the same sort of thing as I am. But also they are all little men locked up inside their skins. And they're intelligent, they have feelings and values and are capable of love and virtue. But the number two is the world that's non-human that we call nature. And that's stupid. It has no mind. It has emotions, maybe, in animals. But on the whole, it's a pretty grim business. Dog eat dog. And when it gets to the geological level, it's as dumb as dumb can be. It's a mechanism. And there's an awful lot of it. And that's what we live in the middle of. And the purpose of being human is, we feel, to subjugate nature. To make it obey our will. And we arrived here, we don't feel that we belong in this world. It's foreign to us. In the words of the poet Hausmann, I, a stranger and afraid, 
in a world I never made. And so all around us today, we see the signs of man's battle with nature. I'm living at the moment in a marvelous house in the Hollywood Hills. And we are overlooking a lake. And on the other side of the lake, the whole hill has suddenly been interrupted with a ghastly gash where they have made level lots for building tracked homes of the kind you would build on a flat plain. This is called the conquest of nature. These houses will eventually fall down the hill <coughs> because they are causing soil erosion and they're being maximally stupid. The proper way to build a house on a hillside is to do it in such a way as to effect the minimum interference with the nature of the hill. After all, the whole point of living in the hills is to live in the hills. There's no point in converting the hills into something flat and then going and living there. You can do that already on the ground. <clears throat> so people, the more people live in the hills, the more they spoil the hills, and they're just the same as people living on the flat ground. I mean, how stupid can you get? Well, anyway, that this is one of the symptoms of our phony sense of identity, of our phony feeling that we are something lonely, locked up in a bag of skin, confronted with a world, an external, alien, foreign world that is not me. Now, according to certain of these great ancient philosophies like Buddhism, this sensation of being a separate lonely individual is a hallucination. It's a hallucination brought about by various causes, the way we are brought up, uh, being the chief of them, of course. I remember as a child, and you probably have very similar memories to mine, that uh, all our parents were desperately interested in identifying us. You don't you remember that sometimes you went out and played with other children, and there was someone in the group of other children you admired and look up to, and you came home imitating the mannerisms of that other child. And your mother said to you, Johnny, Johnny, that's not you, that's Peter. And you felt a little bit ashamed because somehow you had let her down. She wanted you to be you, her child, and not Mrs. Jones's child, Peter. And so in many ways, we are all taught this. For example, the main thing that we're all taught in childhood is that you must do that which will only be appreciated if you do it voluntarily. <clears throat> Now, darling, I, uh, a dutiful child must love its mother. But now, I don't want you to do it because I say so, but because you really want to. Or, you must be free. See, this comes into politics. Everybody must vote. You see, imagine, you're members of a democracy, and you must be members of a democracy. See, you're ordered to. Crazy. Also, thou shalt love the Lord thy God. Is that a commandment or a joke? Do you know, if you suggest that the Lord is joking, most people in our culture are offended because they have a very moronic conception of God as a person totally devoid of humor. <clears throat> but the Lord is highly capable of joking because joking is one of the most constructive things you can do. So 
when you are told who you are and that you must be free furthermore that you must survive and you must go on living and that becomes a kind of compulsion you get mixed up it's very simple of course you get mixed up if you think you must do something which will only be the thing required of you if you do it freely <clears throat> these are the sort of influences then that cause human beings all over the world to feel isolated to feel that they are centers of awareness locked up in bags of skin 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 up in bags of 